properties of parallelograms, and we have four theorems. We're at 6.2a with four previous videos for Chapter 6 that are in the playlist if you need them. Any polygon with four sides is a quadrilateral, but some quadrilaterals have special properties, and these special quadrilaterals are given their own names. A quadrilateral with two pairs of parallel sides is a parallelogram. We use this little rectangle for its symbol for geometric notation. And we can write parallelogram ABCD, or we can put the little rectangle ABCD. So we see our parallel marks here that we've learned about. So AB is parallel to CD, and BC is parallel to AD. And opposite sides of a quadrilateral do not share a vertex and opposite angles do not share a side. So here's our first theorem for properties of parallelograms. If a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then its opposite sides are congruent. So if this is a parallelogram, this side is congruent to this one, and this one's congruent to that one. We have a proof of this theorem. Here we have J, K, L, M, and we can see it's got a diagonal, and we can see we've got some angle numbers here. We also see the parallel marks. So here's our two-column proof. JKLM is a parallelogram. That's given. Segment JK is parallel to segment LM. This is parallel to this. And KL is parallel to MJ. That's the definition of a parallelogram. Number three, we've got angle one is congruent to angle two, and angle three is congruent to angle four. That's alternate interior angles theorem. If we've got these parallel lines and this one's going on a diagonal, that's, that's a transversal, isn't it? Which means 1 and 2 are alternate interior angles and 3 and 4 are alternate, alternate interior angles. Number 4, we've got segment JL is congruent to segment JL. The hypotenuse for this triangle is congruent to the hypotenuse for this triangle because they share it. And that's the reflexive property of congruence. Then we've got triangle JKL is congruent to triangle LMJ because of angle-side angle from steps 3 and 4. We have an angle, a side, and an angle. And that brings us to number 6. Segment JK is congruent to segment LM, and segment KL is congruent to segment MJ because of CPCTC. Congruent parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So if you see two parallel lines cut by two transversals, they'll make a parallelogram on the inside. See that? Here's our next theorem. It says if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then its opposite angles are congruent. This one said the opposite sides are congruent. Now number two says the opposite angles are congruent. So A will be congruent to B, and B will be congruent to D. And we can write geometric notation like this to say its opposite angles will be congruent. Number three says, if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then its consecutive angles are supplementary. That means A plus B will be 180, B plus C will be 180, C plus D will be 180, and D plus A will be 180. And we can write it in a proof like this, with consecutive angles and sup, okay? So that's if it's a parallelogram, then, okay, for the rectangle and the arrow. Here's our fourth one. If a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then its diagonals bisect each other. So now these diagonals are bisecting each other at Z. So AZ is congruent to CZ, and BZ is congruent to DZ. And we can write it in a proof as diags bisect each other. Okay? And the proofs for these theorems use CPCTC, or the angle pairs that are shown, and if you don't remember, CPCTC is congruent parts of congruent triangles are congruent. And if you missed that, you need to go back to 4.7a and watch that when you have a chance because it's really important. We're going to use that in proofs. So the five properties we end up with are opposite sides are parallel, opposite sides are congruent, opposite angles are congruent, consecutive angles are supplementary, and diagonals bisect each other. Okay? Now let's get a little silly. Look what I found on the internet. I was looking for pictures of parallelograms, and I found this. So someone's barn or garage or shed is just really leaning, isn't it? So the side of this slanted building forms a parallelogram. And we have P, Q, R, S, and they bisect the diagonals at T in the center there. And Q, R, this top line, is 12 feet. 
our t from this point to the center is 6.25, and the measure of angle QPS, so it's this one, is 65 degrees. We need to find each measure. So PS, the bottom line here, well, segment PS is congruent to segment QR because the opposite sides are congruent from theorem 1. So that means if they're congruent, they're equal, because that's a definition of congruent segments. And if we know QR, QR is 12 feet, well then PS is 12 feet. We substitute 12 for QR. We can find the measure of angle PQR, that's this big one up here. We know from the third theorem that if we add PQR and QPS, it should equal 180 degrees. And we know QPS is 65. So we can write our equation that way and subtract 65 from both sides, and we're left with measure of angle PQR is equal to 115 degrees. We can find PT from this point to the center. We know that RT is 6.25, and segment PT is congruent to RT from our theorem, fourth theorem, and so that means they're equal. Definition of congruent segments. So that means segment PT is 6.25 feet. Okay? We've got one more. Take a look at this parallelogram. We've got ABCD is a parallelogram. Side BC is 5x plus 19. Side AD is 7x. Angle B is 6y plus 5. And angle A is 10y minus 1. We want to find this 7x, this AD. We know AD is congruent to BC. These two are congruent. The opposite sides are congruent from theorem 1. If they're congruent, they're equal. That's the definition of congruent segments. And we can write an equation where they're set equal to each other. So we have 7x equals 5x plus 19. We can subtract 5x from each side of the equation and eliminate this and get 2x equals 19. We divide by the coefficient and we get x is equal to 9.5. Well, if x is equal to 9.5, we just multiply it by 7, and we know that AD is 66.5. Now we need to find the measure of angle B. Well, we know from our third theorem that they're supplementary. They should equal 180 degrees. And that means that this angle B plus angle A should equal 180 degrees. And we add them together. When we substitute the values and we get this equation, and we have a minus 1 plus 5, and we have a 10y and a 6y, so we're going to have a 16y plus 4 when we combine like terms, and we have them set to equal 180. We can get rid of this plus 4 here by subtracting 4 from each side, and we get 16y equals 176. We divide by the coefficient 16 and get y is equal to 11. Now, for the measure of angle B, all we have to do is put 11 in the place of the y. We get 6 times 11 plus 5, which is 71 degrees, okay? So be careful if a quadrilateral has only one set of parallel lines. It isn't necessarily a parallelogram. Watch the little note notations and the little markings that are on the diagrams, okay? And be careful with that because sometimes the markings are tiny. Our next lesson is a continuation of this one. It's parallelograms in the coordinate plane, 6.2b. After that, we're going to do conditions for parallelograms theorem 6.3a, okay? So hope you were able to write down these theorems if you needed them in your theorem notes so you can use them for proofs and keep trying. I believe in you. I'll see you next time. Hit the like button. Bye.